All right, so I'm gonna get some things to, some rags. I'm gonna keep this, the camera a little bit in the shade because it will be better for filming. So I'm gonna grab some rags. I'm gonna wipe this body down real quick, nothing crazy. And then I'm gonna get that paint mixed up and we're gonna get painted. Cool. All right, everyone. What I'm working on now is getting this paint mixed up. So this is the paint. I've showed you it once already. It's magic tractor truck and implement paint. It's oil-based enamel. This is the red oxide primer. So what this comes with is these other two cans. So the taller can's a reducer. The smaller can is a catalyst. So this is what hardens the paint. And obviously the reducer is what thins it out. Typical. So basically when you buy this pint and then this half pint, these kits are for a gallon kit. <clears throat> so you're essentially supposed to add this entire pint to a gallon and then the same goes for this catalyst. But because I'm using a quart, they just cut it in quarter. So I used a quarter of the pint and then a quarter of the half pint. I used my mixing paddle and I mixed it all up. So now I have that in this paint pot and I'm gonna transfer it over to my roller tray that I had a liner in, but the wind must have blew it away. Shit, friggin' windy out. The wind blew it away. Just gonna dump most of it in here. So I'm just using a smooth foam roller. These are for cabinets, doors, door cat, you know, cabinet doors, drawer fronts, things like that. I don't use them all that often, but these are a good, good tool to use in this particular situation. Well, let's see. Oh, I gotta wipe this car down real quick. Now I did thin it out quite a bit, so it is pretty thin. If it does have it, it will probably have a tendency to run, but if it does, I'll just, I'll, I should have time to catch it. Let me just wipe this down real quick. in the cold out here trying to get this thing all primed up and the outside is primed I still have to do the underside of the car I planned on doing that first but with it being so windy and not be able to spray I'm just gonna wait till another day so I decided to get something done and I got the outside of the car and I'm gonna show you that right now That's it. I got the visor done also. Visor's right there. That's it. That's what we're looking at. Pretty happy with it the way it came out. You guys notice in the background my next flip car?
How's it going everybody? It's Mike, this old hot rod. I just want to do kind of a, a wrap up. This is a really short video. I haven't had a ton of time lately. Spring is, is kind of breaking up here in New England in certain areas. You can see the car is back on the chassis and there were some things I needed to do that I hadn't done. One of them is right here, the steering box. You can see when I built the firewall, I didn't have the steering column in and I forgot to drill the hole for the steering column so I had to set the body back on figure out the angle that I needed to cut the steering column or the hole that I needed to mount the steering column through so I could get that hole cut so now what I need to do is I need to get the steering box a couple holes drilled in the top of the frame rail just capped over the top of it so once I get that done I'll be able to get some paint on the chassis now I said in past videos the frame does need to be boxed and a couple of people commented on the last video and said I can see it flexing yes and that's why I said during the last video the frame does need to be boxed uh, the reason being is obviously adding a, a overhead valve V8 there's going to be a lot of flexing and twisting on the chassis and that's something that I think should be done in the future uh, you know I'm sure you could drive the car and be just fine but as soon as you really put your foot in it sometimes these cars have a tendency for the doors to pop open when they twist uh, it's just a really common thing so uh, that being said I think that's something that's going to need to be done and at this point kind of I kind of really want to get this car out of the garage I stripped down the frame I used my contour SCT the tool I put my wire wheel attachment on it I stripped everything down cleaned everything up I got the transmission cross member welded the rear suspension mount cross member welded I got the motor mounts welded, I finished welded the plates on the front where I dropped the radiator down. Uh, everything that I've done to the chassis thus far is finished welded. Everything's kind of cleaned up and basically ready for paint at this point. Uh, what I also ended up doing is I added a mount on the rear suspension for my torque rod. And someone had mentioned, oh I wish, I, I wish I had, you had uh, done the torque rod. I reached back out in a comment and said that I have a torque rod that was already built for my 29 sedan because I converted that to open drive but I ended up creating my own set of ladder bars essentially out of the radius rods with uh, DOM tubing so I didn't end up using the torque rod because I didn't need it. And what the torque rod is, I'll show you, this is the torque rod. It's pretty straightforward, it's got heim joint ends on either end and what this does is essentially this goes next to the drive shaft and this helps eliminate rotate the rotation or the torquing of the rear axle assembly under load or, or slowing down or deceleration uh, what this does is this bolt mounts to this bolt goes into a mount on the rear axle on the center section of the rear axle and I'll show you that in a minute and I'll kind of show you guys how this works so this is cut to length. I ended up having to cut it down, shortened it because it was longer on my sedan. So I ended up cutting it down for this particular application and I got it all finished welded, painted. Uh, front suspension's painted, rear suspension's painted. Again, this, it's been rainy here and I, it re, either raining or windy and I haven't really had any, a lot of opportunities to get the underside of the car painted and inside the car painted. So I kind of just tried to stay busy with uh, some other things so I got the torque rod all set up axles and everything painted uh, I got a bunch of the little nuts and bolts and hardware painted from underneath the car also just waiting for a good day and then I'll lift the body back off and I'll bring everything outside and I'll get that stuff painted once it's painted it's going back together and that's it uh, and then this thing's going to be hopefully going to its new home so let me spin the camera around and I'll show you guys the torque rod assembly and how, just the simple bracket that you make, where you bolt it on, or at least how I bolt it on. And um, I can't really show you the mount under the car because it's completely hidden under the car, but in the process of doing every, putting everything back together, I'll be reattaching the torque rod and mounting the radius rods and everything. So I'll show you guys that and kind of do a quick overview of that at the same time. So hopefully you'll kind of get the gist of it if you don't in this quick little video. All right, so so you can kind of see here. I'm using my chassis cart as a paint cart. I've got the front axle assembly, 
in satin black paint. I threw a couple coats on the dashboard just for the heck of it. Um, the torque rod here, the glove box, and some of the suspension pieces. I have other parts also that were painted that are on the other side of the garage, but really nothing, uh, nothing of real interest. Here's the rear axle assembly. Now I'll show you the torque rod mount and what I was referring to a few minutes ago. So this here is the torque rod mount. If you can see this, I'll zoom the camera in real quick. So this here is the torque rod mount, and it's pretty simple. I just grab some longer bolts, fine thread, use longer bolts to go through the torque rod mount. So this mount is where this rod attaches to. And as I had said a few minutes ago, it essentially travels next to, this isn't the right bolt, but just for demonstration purposes, just to hold it here for a minute. So that's essentially where the torque rod bolts onto, and that will travel essentially the same distance or the same path as the drive shaft, like that. And then this end also mounts onto the rear cross member and everything. So as these are moving, this essentially will hold the rear axle in place from rotating. And again, I already had my pinion angle set, so there's no issues there. And if I do need to adjust the pinion angle, I have enough adjustments in these heim joints where I should be able to adjust it. Also centering it. Once I get everything set in place, I'll fine tune my measurements, get my wheelbase, make sure it's squared, and lock everything in, and I should be good to go. Uh, so that's basically it. Taped off this. I have the hot rod works, the adapter kit over on the shelf. I have my backing plates. I have another set of backing plates that I painted up black. Those are over on the shelf. Uh, yeah, just trying to keep busy right now while the weather is really not cooperating. But once I get a good day, like I said, I'll be able to lift the body back off the chassis after the steering box is mounted. And essentially the steering box is just three holes. I got to drill in the hardware for it. Uh, once that's all set, it's gonna, uh, I'll wire wheel it, kind of just get it cleaned up real quick, nothing fancy. I'll get that rattle can. These are all painted with rattle cans. I use those uh, big turbo turbo cans. Actually, it's amazing how fast the paint comes out and it lays out really nice. So what I'll do is I'll get that wire wheel and get that painted up. And then uh, I'll get the parts here off the, the chassis cart. Or maybe I'll paint the chassis on the cart itself and then do the underside of the car and the inside of the car black at the same time. And that'll be it, like I said, and this thing is going to kind of go back together hopefully pretty quick. And then out the door it goes. This needs another coat. Just kind of hit it real quick. Again, you know, I'm, I'm happy where the body is at now. Obviously, it's not perfect. And this is that panel that I've replaced here. couple little scuff marks. I started hammering and dolly in this area out where it was pretty rough. This is the patch that I did here. So, all in all not too bad. There are a couple areas like I had mentioned earlier in other videos that still kind of need some attention but I'm just at the point now where I'm I'm kind of done working on the thing doing some of those little jobs and I think the next person can do it so yeah so that's it so again like I said the chat the cars the body is back on the chassis the reason being is so I could cut that hole so what I ended up doing was I had to pull the wheel off the steering column once I was able to do that I was able to get the steering column slid up inside the body figure out exactly where it needs to be on the chassis I have to adjust the column drop because what I ended up doing, I moved the body forward so that affected the location of the column drop. So I need to do some work on the column drop now and get that kind of reset. Once that's set and I know exactly where it's going to be, I'll get the steering box drilled and the holes drilled and everything. And like I said, I just essentially have to plate this up and over. You can see the mark on there that I've already used. So I'll end up cutting this here. 
and they're going up here and then down here and then I'll cap this with 3 16 plate from the boxing plates that I have the leftovers and I'll get that covered up I'll get my three holes drilled probably weld up some of these additional holes that we hear from what for whatever like I had said before everything's finished welded and I'll just kind of weld these up real quick got those welded up and cleaned up um, yeah and then everything else you really can't see it because it's under the car Alright everyone, so that's gonna be it for me. I got my eat golf, my girl AZ in here. Um, yeah, so that's just a quick overview on the torque rod. Like I said, I'll show you guys that once it goes back in the car after everything's painted. Um, I, I've said all along this is a, a good start to a project for someone. And again, it's being sold as a project, something that needs to be finished. You yeah. know, yeah, that's basically it. So uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get everything put back together pretty soon and once that happens we'll do a quick overview like I had said in one of the other videos or earlier in this video I'm gonna go through my shipping container pull out some parts that I think the next person could use on the car and all that stuff will just go with the car just to get the next person that much further along so thanks everybody for watching sorry I'm talking a lot but I just don't have a lot of things to show you on this video not a lot of fabrication it was just a quick paint job on the body and just Working with the weather, trying to get trying to get this thing moved along and not wanting to do any spray painting inside the garage because, you know, I just have a lot of stuff in here I don't want to have to cover. So thanks again, everyone. I appreciate you guys watching, following along. And uh, hit that subscribe button if you like old hot rods and you dig the channel. See you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.